You're listening to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. I'm here once again with Anna and Paul. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm enjoying Linux for the first time in my life on this uh, groovy little laptop that uh, got introduced to me recently. It's it's pretty smooth. It runs really well, and and it works great to record these podcasts with you guys. Awesome. I'm also I'm doing bloody well myself. I must note that I feel like Anna's been kind of slightly talking down to us ever since she began using Linux. <laughs> <laughs> that goes with the culture. Right? I, I think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I think it runs on uh, condescension. <laughs> that was one of the apps, and it wouldn't let me do anything else until I opened it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, n- not that you're condescending there, but like you, you should hear her when we're off the air. Very yeah. abusive, yeah. <laughs> so, we'll edit that out. That's okay, guys. Go on, go on. <laughs> um, so, last week or something very recently we touched very briefly on the replay value of classic games and i mean briefly as in like i actually don't even remember us talking about it but um anna you reminded me that we did and i have (laughs) no recollection but i know you wouldn't lie to me and i know that you like remember stuff so (laughs) we were recently briefly touching on replay value allegedly allegedly (laughs) thank you i do remember that part thanks paul (laughs) Um, but it is kind of an interesting topic to think about because, you know, back in the classic era, they didn't really have a lot of, um, uh, technology wiggle room to work with in order to really, uh, get the most replay value out of games. But I'm sure there are some notable games. In fact, well, I mean, I know that there are some notable games that did manage to do really well at putting in ways, uh, to get a very, a varied uh, experience on, uh, multiple playthroughs. Or on different playthroughs, like depending how you play it. And that's just kind of, uh, uh, you know, whether that's multiple endings or just different paths. So I just thought we would uh, talk about that for a bit. Yeah, because sometimes it takes more than points to want to play a game again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I can start right away and just say that, like, uh, you know, we're not going to go down this like a list or anything like that. But even still, I'll give an honorable mention to like every RPG ever. Um, so just if if we don't mention your favorite RPG, it's probably because we haven't played it. So just like, you know, get off our back about that. Um, (laughs) we are just, you know, we haven't played everything, but RPGs are by definition very replayable because like, oh, I'm going to play with a sword this time. Oh, I'll play with a bow magic. Yay. And you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, it's not to say we're not going to bring up any RPGs, but I'm just saying that, yeah, we get it. RPGs. Lots of replay value right there. Well, just like The Sims, even the original The Sims 1 or Sim City, depending on how you set things up, can vary how the game plays and it can vary every time you play it. But it, it's mm-hmm. not really what we're looking at today. Exactly. Well, the majority of my list consists of like Super Mario Brothers, so I think I got to do better. <laughs> <laughs> you have a point with Mario 2, you could play through it all the way with Princess or Luigi or Toad or even Mario, <laughs> mix it up a little bit. You can keep playing that game till you're 41, just like me. Okay, I, I have a question. Did any of you guys have a favorite character in Mario 2? I like uh, Princess because the, the ability to, to glide down was invaluable. Was it? I never needed that. Really? Yeah, I needed it in the whale level and, you know, for the uh, the level where you wanted to do fun things like warp. She was great for gliding and dropping and right. memorization of patterns like in the ice level to duck around stuff. But Toad was great if you needed a lot of coins. So he was really, really important if you were into, you know, getting a lot of extra lives and stuff. So certain levels, you're like, I want every single thing I can pick. Yeah. And if I get princess, I'm not going to be able to get the last few. But you see, smart people choose characters based on the level whereas i would for some reason i don't know why i would like pick one character and just like (laughs) stick with them yeah (laughs) even though the option was there fully like it's not discreet it's hey who are you going to play with this level i'd just be like well i've always been playing with toad so toad yeah yeah fiercely loyal one one-handed side to it too it's kind of like having your favorite monopoly piece it's like that's just i play 
I played that guy. Like I'm, I'm the younger sibling. Of, I have an older brother, so I was always <laughs> bloody Luigi. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I like the shoe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at least Monopoly tokens are all equal. It's not like they have like different abilities each that actually like affect how well you do at the level. That's true. It's kind of like like the Super Mario Brothers one. Like there was no difference. The, the only replay value there, I mean, besides the obvious, because we all replay it. But the on paper, the replay value is like you know now I can play it again, but with a green hat, and that's, <laughs> that's about it. Well, once you finish it, everything gets harder, and all the everything tries to kill you that much more. So, I mean, does that make it better? Because it never convinced me to play it again. In the same way that after finishing all the secret levels in Super Mario World and all the Star World puts you back into the game, but all the creatures are once again harder and more difficult to kill and kind of look like jack-o'-lanterns. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another good point about, um, especially with modern games, especially with RPGs, uh, is that a lot of the things they do to encourage replay value actually kind of discourage me from replaying them. So, like, you know, they're like, oh, here's like, 60 to 100 hours of content. I'm like, yeah, I'll play that once, maybe. Right. You know? <laughs> I don't have time to this, like, or I say that, but I actually totally do. And I put, dump like hundreds of hours into other more meaningless games. But, um, you know, it's like, well, here's an RPG like Skyrim where it's like 200 hours of stuff. I'm like, yeah, how about I just play that till I get bored and then never again, ever? Like, I still <laughs> haven't finished it. It's been 10 years. It's something. like that for me. Being a business owner, being a parent, uh, even doing the podcast with you guys, there's not a lot of time to invest that other three hours that I have into the six hour, 600 hours that I need to play some of these games. Mm -hmm. I'd, lo I'd like to. I'd like to get that immersion that people talk about, too. I think that would be a really fun thing to experience when I retire. Yeah, and all this, like, paying attention to the story. Oh, man, it's hard <laughs> to do. I but see, I see like 200 hours into a game and I'm like, you know, I could play this, but I could also get like a diploma. So <laughs> we're, we're, but I'm going to play the game. It's all that paying attention stuff that I don't do well at. Like I'll, I probably put like hundreds of hours into like WWE and various wrestling games throughout the years, but it's just because I just pick it up and beat someone up for a while. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it, it it's not like, okay, so what was I doing? Who do I right. like and trust and what the quest items and follow this and what did the last person tell me to do? So for that matter, I guess I'm going to like, um, uh, a lot of games like wrestling games. I'm probably going to just, well, I guess I'll mention it now because I already did, but you know, <laughs> they obviously have replay value because I could just pick them up and play them. Like I'm eating chips. I'm not going to so. mention that thing I just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll mention it anyways. Cause I mentioned it. <laughs> Stardew Valley's like that too. I mean, I don't know. On my account, there's like 900 hours put on it between me, my son, and his friend. So clearly, it has replay value. It's just not a classic adventure game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's a good point too. Speaking of, of classics, um, you know, I guess besides side scrollers and such, it, it's they weren't. They didn't even have the capacity or, or the uh, ability to be these gin ginormous games. Mm -hmm. you know, there was no, there was no game in '92 that you could play for 200 hours. Again, you know, console theoretically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so so let's let's say classics only. Like, so uh, up until the '90s, like, don't go later than the '90s. Like, what are some of the um, best replayable games of uh, the classic era? Um, I would jump in and go with um, with uh, Unavowed, which was uh... <laughs> anything before the twenty nineties. Like, is that how you read that? I was told there'd be no math in this episode, so I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just to, to one to be a, a bit of a dick and to also just get out of the way, um, I, I did want to mention Unavowed because it's, uh, I think one of the cool parts of the replayability in that game was it's not like let's experience this game from a different level or, or to have some different puzzles or a different take on the story. It's like you, you straight up just don't get to play with a number of characters the first time through. So you have, you know, there's just tons of dialogue trees and narration and such that you completely miss out on, you know, 
by choice or you know you have no you have no choice to to experience that the first time through so i think that's that's something for me that's appealing because it's a game's it's got to be bloody really appealing for me to go back as mm -hmm. you alluded to earlier like if it's and if you said if it's going to be more difficult that's going to scare me away like i've never breezed through a game so easily that i was like let's do that again but make it harder please like can i have more <laughs> I, i'm not I'm bloody just not good enough at games for that so i i need something really strong to get me back into it and, and i would definitely in the coming future like to play on about again right i think to that point it's like i think a lot of the games in the 90s actually did have a lot more replay value for me because uh they were smaller so you know it would take a good while to finally get through it but once you know how to finish it you could get through a game in inside of an afternoon and, and, and that, there's two kinds of replay value. There's the kind of replay value like I want to play this again right away to experience the things that I've missed or need to do. And there's I want to play it again later on for nostalgic or other reasons or to get a points run. I mean, yeah, that's a very uh, that's a very good point because there's there's a lot of games that that I want to replay on paper, but I still find myself like firing up Space Quest 3, like, for the, you know, 17th time or whatever. So I, I, there is something, like, uh, something to say about that, like, warm, familiar blanket sort of feeling with yes, games. Yes, exactly. Actually, that was, that was even uh, very close to uh, the example I was going to give, I, I believe. Uh, well, Space Quest 3 as well. I think Space Quest 5 uh, and all the Quest of Glories and stuff like that. A lot of the Sierra games, I would just, like... Um, I'd play them over and over again. And it wasn't just because like, oh, I'm a completionist and I must get all the points or anything. It was just like, no, that was fun. I want to do that again. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fun doing something you know. And I mean, for a lot of people, I think it brings them back to that time when they were playing it. Or maybe they'll remember specific smells or sounds or things that happened at the time. Maybe it's just nice to play something where you already know what to do essentially, or to see if you have dementia yet. Do I still know how to finish <laughs> King's Quest Four? And if I don't, maybe there's something wrong with my brain box because I knew how to do this last year when I tried playing through this. Yeah. I mean, I used to play it over and over again back in the day. Like I, at the time when I, like for the first year that I had any of these games, I played through them so much. I did that with Space Quest Four. I just found it so funny and sarcastic mm -hmm. and mean. I Maybe I liked it. <laughs> maybe there was some sadistic part of me that was just like, my family is so nice and I'm so comfortably middle class. I want this sarcastic guy to be slightly mean to me and I want to die a lot. <laughs> Take me down a notch, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need this. I need this. Humble me. More games need to be narrated by J.K. Simmons from Whiplash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that's a good one we've established. So uh, I, I won't, we're not ranking them or anything. We're not bloody you know going into that much effort with this system. But a, a good a good thing to put on the board officially is is replay value number one is is just general enjoyability, plain and simple. Nothing more, no points, no mm -hmm. branching paths, nothing like that. Just if you bloody love the game, yeah. Just like when you uh you know back in the day you'd record an episode of The Simpsons and you of course you just watch it over and over again until the next episode came out right right yeah mm -hmm. yeah or record yeah, well, songs off of the radio because you didn't have the tape and you needed to hear it fifty thousand times yep. yeah yeah oh, even absolutely. though it was on the radio already fifty thousand times but you're like no I need it <laughs> on my terms <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to, to to you lot what you what your opinion is on this when I when I replay a game I I find that I am immediately shit at it. Like I, I, I'd never remember the puzzles like I think I will. Like it, it's, it's like I, I get like three freebies. Like I'll remember three or four of the really easy puzzles, and and that's it. Like I'm always very disappointed in myself for how little I, I can recall going through something. Do you get that too? Uh, I honestly don't know what the um, what the key factor is because there are some games that I can play pretty well um, still. And then there are some that I just, I don't remember anything. And I, and these are even still the games I played like over and over and over again back in the day. And for some reason, it just, it just never turned into, um, uh, well, I mean, adventure games probably don't turn into muscle memory, uh, <laughs> the way that platformers do. And even then I suck at platformers, but, uh, you know, I have friends who are just like, you know, will go years and they'll just be awesome at Mario free just because they have it in their muscle memory that are supposed to do things at exactly the right time. And with adventure games, I don't think that really happens. So I'm just sort of like, oh, right. Um, I know I'm supposed to do something, but I don't know where that item is anymore. 
or something right. like that, right? I used to think I was really good at the Mario games before I started replaying them with my middle son, but he's got all these techniques and special moves and, you know, they've got YouTube now. They know more than I do. I haven't watched all these super fast playthroughs of all the games that I used to play and, and learned all of these tricks and glitches and places where you can just fall down and do stuff. So now I kind of feel a little old and slow when it comes to platformer games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a really good point you just brought up uh, about your son, um, what, doing uh, a YouTubing, because there was a lot of games that like from the 90s, 80s, whatever that, that I had and loved and played growing up that I didn't realize there was there was other options in, until modern era, until uh, Google or, or Classic Gamers Guild, you know, people are, are mentioning it. So in other words, uh, a great example in a game we could talk about is Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. The first time I, I played that through, I, I may have played it more than once as a kid. It, it's irrelevant because I, I never knew there was more paths that you could take than the one because it, it really comes down to just, <laughs> just a, it's just a dialogue tree. Like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Indy, are you going on the thing? And then you just say like, yeah, I'm, I'm going. It's going to be tough. You stay here or yes, I'm going. I'd like company or I, I maybe that's a slight hint, but, but for the most part, it's, it's, <laughs> 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 damn it. it yeah, that would maybe. Okay. So, you, well, you could argue, all right, I could see that maybe there's two paths, but, I, but three, like I wouldn't have picked up on the wording of like, yeah, but it's going to be tough. And that means it's a whole different path with, you know, the, the fist pass, in other words. So I, my point is, is it, it's well, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, he very specifically emphasizes, uh, I'll do this alone, let's work as a team, and I want action. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I wouldn't, I don't think I would have taken that literally. Like, I would have just <laughs> been like, well, let's, you know. They tried their best to get through to you. <laughs> they had no bold, no italics, no underlines. It's <laughs> I think they capitalized the keywords. <laughs> That's that following storyline thing we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, whether I picked a good example or not, um, <laughs> I'll defer to. You. Well, I mean, it's a great example for like the actual, like you know, what we're getting down to in terms of like replayability, because they are like pretty much three different games based on which one you pick. Yeah, yeah, no, very much so. And 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 just to to tidy off the the other thought was just there there are maybe Blade Runner is a better example. We could get into that later, but there's just I I didn't know a lot of the times that there was there was other options. So it's it's really taken me, to, you know, Facebook groups and Google and such to be like, oh, I could I could play that a whole different way, huh? That's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, it ties into what you were saying, mate, Rick, about the um. Uh, being loyal to to like one Mario Brothers character, like I, I do have a tendency to like be extremely uncreative when I replay a game. It's like I feel comfortable <laughs> knowing that you know, yeah. like I, I like I like I like saying Sophia should come with me because I don't want to hurt her feelings and and <laughs> and then and then I, I never discover that because I would kind of assume in that scenario that choosing anything but saying come with me would mm -hmm. just be some sort of witty back and forth that ends up with you taking her with you anyway you know like you, you feel like the game's just like you know you, we're gonna give you a false sense of free will but ultimately we we designed her she's bloody going with you yeah um, i think the only thing um i i never chose the action option because i'm like that's not why i'm playing this game yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no, I, I don't even know what it's like i don't even know like how much of it remains adventure and how much action they put into it but I'm just sort of like, oh, because I, you know, I, I know that it branches off. I know that this is the action pathway. I'm like, ah, so, so I just got to like fight everyone. Fighting's never like the fun part of an adventure game. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Mechanics are always, are always leave you wanting. I've recently, I played Indiana Jones, um, or Fate of Atlantis with, uh, with my son. Well, I mean, he just watched. That's generous of me to say. <laughs> <laughs> Take him down a notch too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, as soon as I finished it, I was like, you know what? I I'm kind of, I'm still into this. Let's just go right back and just do the other pass. So actually, I, I mistake myself. I preemptively made that decision. So basically I finished it. I got to Atlantis as Sophia with Sophia and then I saved it. And then I went all the way back and, and did it again with, with fists and did it again with wits and, and kind of, by the last one, then I would keep going from Atlantis. But that being said, the, the fighting path, there wasn't, there wasn't as much as you might think. There's like this one segment where, where you go like four or five rooms in a row and have to deal with somebody, knock them out or, or fight them or whatever. Mm. Um, but other than that, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot more than, uh, the wits path. Right. I don't know. I, I, like, like I said, I, I'm going to try my best to avoid focusing too much on RPGs, but, uh, Quest for Glory 3 kind of reminds me, 
similarly, but to a lesser extent to Fate of Atlantis, just because like uh, uh, I think this is kind of like the one that really locked away some content be- specifically behind class selection. So which character class you choose will determine certain plot points. So, you know, um, only the wizard and only a true wizard will get to uh, challenge the shaman. And uh, only an actual thief who's selected to be primarily a thief will be able to do the thief sequences. And, uh, you know, fighter and paladin, they have their thing. So it's just kind of, uh, you know, to a lesser extent, but it's still (laughs) kind of like, oh, well, if you want to see everything that's in the game, you have to play every single character class. Well, and that's the neat thing about the Quest for Glory series is uh, when you play through it, for me, there's an order of operations, okay? So you have to play through it the very first time as a fighter because, to me, it's the easiest way. You go fighter and then you go paladin later on and and it's pretty easy to go through. And then the second for me is magic user because I've always felt that was the second easiest. I don't even know if somebody told me that when I was younger, but that that's the way that I did it. So you run (laughs) through it as the magic user and then when you're done, you play it through as the thief because it's exciting and it's fun, but it's the hardest because you don't don't have magic and you can't fight so you have to like learn to sneak and use that alternative thinking to figure out the game but thief was always my favorite mm-hmm. when i was younger too probably because i was a bit of a kleptomaniac when i was younger <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. relation to the game i'm sure Lori and Corey. Yeah. it's uh, you know yeah it just was a thing but i mean like it especially started with three because i think um uh in the first two games the first one for sure, I'm pretty sure you could do just about anything as long as you have the right stats. And mm-hmm. in Quest of Glory 2, you can, if you're the fighter, you can pretty much do anything with the right stats except for see the harem sequence and uh, do the fi- the thief finish. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, and, and the wizard, you can't do the EOF, uh, but you can do pretty much everything else or the thief sending and mm-hmm. yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, you know, there's a little bit of locked away, but really not. It's very negligible. It was in Quest of Glory 3 where it's basically like, okay, well, here is the fighter's story. Here is mm-hmm. the wizard's story. Here is the thief's story, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. It, it does do that. And, I, you know, I think in that series, number five takes it sort of in that direction as in some of the choices that you've made previously will determine how you end up finishing the game. So if you want to know what it's like to, say, marry somebody else or rescue somebody mm-hmm. else, you have that uh, possibility as well. You're right about three. I think that one had a, had a lot of replay value, actually. Yeah, it, it is especially designed to be played at least four times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because one yeah, for each class. Yeah, if you do it or... as the, the fighter. I've never, I've never done it after three. Have either of you done that? like kept fighter and not gone paladin oh, or anything i i think i did it once in quest of glory 4 can you go all the way oh but you don't know if you can go all the way to the end of five doing that oh you can i just there's no point yeah. no i wouldn't think so you just miss out on stuff right <laughs> yeah they're like we didn't account for you making that choice so yeah, you're, it's we gonna really suck. thought sorry, you would have but... done better by now we yeah. didn't realize you'd be an underachiever, so I guess you get the underachievers <laughs> play through. They even gave you the one fit save file right on it, and they're like, no, seriously, take it, because you're going to want that. If you're new, like, it's going to suck otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> so if you've played through all the games until now and you never made Paladin, like, all you are is a fighter, like, that's the best you could do? Seriously? Just, just here, here, just take a Paladin. Just, yeah. We'll give this one to you. We're virtually shaking our heads. Yeah. <laughs> You're plucky. I'll give you that. So you <laughs> That'd be it with my oldest son. He jumped into five. He saw me play one and he thought it was all right. But five, I, it was the only one that I could get to capture his attention. And what I had to do was I had to start playing it near the end. When you're fighting the Hydra and you can talk to everybody and you can do everything uh, after you're done all of it. And then as he got older, that always mm-hmm. was his favorite one. Oh, cool. So his favorite is actually five. And he does speed runs now. He's in really? his 20s. And that's that's a thing now. So he's able to, I, I can't quote the time because I'll totally get it wrong. And he'll like, mom, that is not how long it took me. But whatever the time is for the world record, he's like, I don't know, a minute and a half off of it or something. It's not very long. Oh, wow. I, I tried to do a speed run. Not, I, I don't know if there's any record for Quest for Glory 3, but I tried to do a speed run of Quest for Glory 3 recently. Mm-hmm. And... um my goal was under an hour and I only didn't 
get that because I forgot where one of the triggers was to advance the story. <laughs> and I just floundered for like half an hour trying to figure that out. That happened so. to me the last time I played. It was between, you know, going over to the, how do you pronounce it? Libon? Is that how you say I, it? I get, I, that's as good Lay as I'm bond, ever going to pronounce it. Yeah. yeah, it was between that and then before you could do uh, take the drum because I was playing as a, a thief magic user and there was like this open time where I couldn't do anything and I couldn't figure it out and I was walking back and forth. Whatever it was, it triggered something and then I was able to progress. It, it makes me curious to look at up like a, a speed run record if you will of, of like police quest one because i feel like all you'd have to do is just not crash your bloody car and you're gonna win that speed record like if you could somehow get through the game without a single car accident don't matter how slow you are the rest of it you're gonna win i don't know if you can speed run that just because like you know especially those old agi games particularly they always have that one gambling mechanic that you have no control over except for saving oh, the yeah. store point yeah yeah maybe you'd have to cheat they they have one on youtube that's 34 minutes and 38 seconds for a police quest 100 percent speed run but i have no way to verify if they used any cheats or not right Is it, yeah. i wonder if there's any glitches or like uh game breaking bugs that you can just sort of like skip ahead stuff because mm -hmm. that's the cool stuff that i really like seeing in speed runs is when people just like do these weird things that sort of like glitch them ahead mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it was funny that the notion of doing a speedrun with AGI it makes makes me wonder like what their technical specs are. Like, are you using a QWERTY keyboard? Because you know you got to be a good <laughs> typer. <laughs> you got to use Dvorak. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine like setting the um, setting the game speed to fastest and just like driving around and doing it? Mm -mm. <laughs> It's hard. Uh, I it was slow when I played Police Quest One before. I was able to drive really easily. My yeah. computer was slow. I don't know. Like, yeah. it wasn't super hard. I actually had the map memorized, and I was quite proud of myself, because I've mentioned in previous episodes, that's the game that taught me how to read a map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, yeah, I, I had the same thing. I think even turning it, I always had to play it on fastest, because that was still slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fastest is normal speed, unless you're doing something really, really finicky. Mm-hmm. I guess it's obligatory for me now to mention it. I've been kind of putting it off to see if somebody else would bring it up first so I didn't have to because it's kind of a cliche of me right now. But Maniac Mansion was awesome for a replay <laughs> value just because, uh, uh, you know, you have all these kids. So you can do different solutions and different puzzles. It was brilliant. Uh, I guess you know what I'm talking about. I, that's probably all I really want to say about that because it's, uh, you know, um, multiple solutions, multiple kids. This is like early, early on in the PC cycle too. So it's like, uh, it's really, that's why it's one of my favorite games of all time. It's really groundbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. It was extremely complex. I, I feel the need to, to expand on that. Cause I don't want us to have talked about replaying Mario brothers for longer than we've been talking about, <laughs> uh, <laughs> maniac, but, but yeah, like you said, I mean, people, I guess you kind of already know, but yeah, that's, that was maybe the birth of, 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 just complete immersion and replayability not not just like at the very end there's a yes or no question that changes the cutscene like a, a <laughs> like mass effect 3 sorry i said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, you know they essentially had to make the same game with uh five different skins on it right <laughs> yeah that's a good uh, good question to ask you lot is is that enough for you to replay a game if, if you find out that, that, you know, you can get just a different cutscene at the end? Like, an example would be Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. There's a, there is a second ending to that, but it's, it's just the cutscene and it depends on your action, uh, regarding, uh, one of the females at the end of the game. I'll try not to spoil it. Um, I'd save and restore. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know, the, one of the things I don't really care for too much in games, like, I like multiple endings. I don't like good and bad endings. Like, I don't really like, uh, oh, you didn't do everything right, so you get the loser ending kind of right. thing. <laughs> um, I do like my choices matter, and uh, here's something a little bit different because you did something differently. But I don't like, oh, sorry, you didn't do it exactly the way you wanted to, so you get the uh, you get the ending where your dog dies or something like that, right? It's like... right. <laughs> Well, that, that leads into Colonel's Bequest, because think about its ending, because depending on what you do and say, as I've mentioned before, you're either figuring everything out, figuring nothing out, or really messing something up. And then at the end, you can, you're like, barely conscious, I think is what it tells you. So, <laughs> I, you yeah. know, I, I give that one such a big pass just because it was like the first time I really experienced that. 
Um, <laughs> and, and because it's a murder mystery. I mean, come on. I guess you can't really not do that in a murder mystery. Um, mm-hmm. So it does. I know that directly contradicts what I just said, but that does kind of get a pass <laughs> from me uh, because, you know, it, it. that's kind of what detective work is supposed to be. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, did you ever finish it as a super sleuth? I think that was the top tier. With a walkthrough, I did because there was, mm-hmm. oh, here's the cool part. This is one of the things that uh, um, I really like about Colonel's Request. And the more I think about it, especially the last time we talked about uh, Colonel's Request and Dagger, Vom, and Ra, uh, I do kind of think that, hey, you know, maybe story-wise, purely, uh, maybe Dagger, Vom, and Ra was actually the better game. But Colonel Spiquest did this one thing that was really cool, is that there's an entire other story in the game that you can find uh, only if you're good enough to find the clues for it. Like, it's not saying that you're particularly involved with, but there's, like, this total backstory to the island or, like, some, like, extra right. chapter of the lore that you is is totally optional and completely missable and only if you, like, find, like, the, uh, this, like, totally different trail of clues can you like unravel the story and it basically uh in the end you're rewarded with like a bag of diamonds but mm. you know it's just like this cool optional story that you don't ever have to find and probably a lot of people never found it probably because they wanted that story to sell the hint book and there's yes. a part of this game that <laughs> you will never see unless yeah. <laughs> but it was possible like it actually like if you think about it uh it would be really hard and yeah it probably was there to sell the hint books possibly but it was possible like you could do it like yeah, if turn you really on those think lateral about thinking it. muscles and pay attention i mm. mean it's all always the clues are right there in front of you and in hindsight you're like yeah that is super logical i can see what they were <laughs> thinking when they made it but when you're trying to find it you're like what the fuck were they <laughs> thinking when they made this well, uh, that that answers the question of the of the episode. What makes a game replayable is is when a mate introduces you the idea of a part of Colonel's bequest you didn't know about, and now you just want to you know replay that game immediately. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I've never played it with a, a hint book or a guide. I've only ever played that game on the fly, and the best I've ever gotten is the middle one, Amateur Gumshoe. That's it. Oh wow! Yeah. Did, did, yeah. did you ever end up with the bag of diamonds at the end, or whatever the yeah. that, that bag of? precious no no i i had an exclamation of surprise when you said that oh okay cool yeah yeah, go, yeah go it's pretty cool i'm out. i'm i can't believe how many little tidbits are hidden in these games when i play through them and i'm like oh yeah i know this game super well and then it just blows my mind like that thanks rick mm-hmm. and so many cool things that are totally missable like did you ever find the um did you ever find the secret room where the bodies get dumped? Now, you know what? My memory is warped. I don't know. Am I, is it because I met you guys in the guild and I learned about it and I went looking for it specifically? You or is me. it because I was super smart and I found it out on my own because the timeline is so thin? Because it was just <laughs> after I joined up that I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, you know what? I totally figured that out. I did it all on my own and it's fine and nobody told me. But then the other part <laughs> of my brain is going, did you really... <laughs> Does I think I might like have had you? a little bit of help. <laughs> Does it really yeah. sound like you? Did you really pull it out and start playing it just for absolutely no reason? Or could it have been maybe because of Julia Minamata and her game that maybe prompted some conversation and led you to learn things? I'm, I'm pretty sure that might be the answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely replaying that game in the near future, though. <laughs> that w- that yeah. wins this episode. You, you never found that room, did you? No, I didn't. I <laughs> made me think of that scene in, in Ace Ventura 2 where he's like, this is a lovely room of death. Take care now. I, I, I need to experience that just to just to say it to myself and chuckle alone. <laughs> um, one really cool thing is, like I said, we are trying to not really focus too much on the RPGs, but this one I think is a sort of like an exceptional case. Uh, and I, I think a lot of people who are fans of the game know about it, but in Fallout... Um, it, it, you know, again, like I said, in RPGs, of course, there's replayability. Like, oh, I'm going to use this type of weapon this time. I'm going to use this type of weapon. Maybe I'll be more charismatic than usual. But um, in Fallout, if you use your intelligence as a dump stat, like if you like just draw from that to like make everything else awesome and you just make yourself an idiot, the game will <laughs> actually put you in an idiot mode where <laughs> all the dialogue is replaced with like, 
guttural sounds and attempts at making words. And you're like the most <laughs> incoherent, like caveman character who just like can't communicate with anyone. And like, um, <laughs> it's hilarious because like, I, I tried it once as soon as I found out that that's something that actually happens. Um, because, you know, with all, all these RPGs, a lot of people try to min-max. They're like, oh, well, I don't need intelligence, so whatever. I'll just put it all into, like, being strong. <clears throat> and um, so, I, so I tried, like, hey, let's let's see what happens if uh, you actually dump it all out of the intelligence. Because I, I heard about it. I wanted to see what it's like. And you, know, you get to the first town, and they're like, welcome to, uh, what was it called? Like, Shady Sands or something. Like, uh, welcome to our uh, little uh, village here uh you're safe here if you have anything that you need just ask us uh you know where are you from and you're like Duh, i do good things or something like whatever <laughs> <laughs> and you just it, it it's one of the style like, options where uh one of the few in the game where they actually have like a full 3d animated character portrait of the character that you're talking to <laughs> and you just see the smile melt from their face and they're just like oh I see. Okay. Um, yeah, just um, feel free to take a look around. We'll, we'll, we'll be here. Just, yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's possible to finish the game by doing that, but like the side quests, not so much so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It will totally lock you out because you can't ask for certain things. But you know, yeah. the, the, that's another really cool thing about Fallout is that the, um, um, the main quest can be finished just by two key uh, trigger events. He's going to blow up this one place here and blow up this one place here. How you get about to doing that is entirely up to you. And uh, everything else is just like, you know, whatever. As long as you do those two things, you finish the game. So, yeah, you could totally just be like this idiot who doesn't know how to do anything around you, who can't communicate with anyone. But you just like smash everything until something eventually blows up and then you win. (laughs) And it's great. That's why I love that game. Well, because it's true to life, right? Yeah. Some people suck at everything, but you know, big, strong smash can play sport. Go, yeah. <laughs> does just fine. <laughs> some have a way with words, and some have not way. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's just so cool. I I thought just because there's like it's basically like another game that they put into this. <laughs> if just just to punish people who thought they were being smart. Dummy mode for smart people. Yes. <laughs> smart has quotation marks around it. You can hear that, right? <laughs> All right. Well, before we wrap it up today, is there anything else that you guys want to bring up? I'll mention um, Blade Runner real quick because that one's bloody got a bunch of different paths that you can take. I always muck the number up. I, I, I change it. It's like six or eight or 12 times. It's it's always more than I think it is. But it's it, that's cool in a sense where you, you get several different paths and several different endings and you can you know you can replay it where your characters you know, generated by the computer as as a replicant or as not and then what i learned recently that i have no experience with is that apparently there's a there's a path that you can take that stays closer to the movie cuz you know if if you played the game or heard of it you you know that the mm-hmm. the the plot of the game is is in parallel to to the movie while it's happening but it's its own a very own plot but apparently there's a way to nudge it even closer to to what deckard's doing well, if I recall correctly from um, the episode that we did on Blade Runner, I think we discovered there's like, is either twelve or sixteen different endings because there were, um, there was certain paths of story that are randomly pr- determined each time you start a new game, mm-hmm. right? And within each of those paths, there are like four different endings depending on the choices you make. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So not yeah. only do you like on that one particular path you can get like four different alternate endings but then when you restart it you could potentially get onto a totally different path with four other alternate endings Mm -hmm. you know i think i didn't come across that game until later but it seems so familiar as i'm playing through it and i was going through a stack of old game books and i have the instruction booklet for blade runner so i'm guessing somewhere in this vast pile of games that i might actually have it still and whatever game you end up replaying, why don't you tell us why? Maybe it's a game that you liked when you were a kid. Like, maybe you replay it because, like me, you feel nostalgic about it. Like the world is small and safe. <laughs> <laughs> 
exactly. Or maybe, you know what, there are things you're going for. Maybe you want to get a full points run. Maybe you just want to know what all the alternative endings are. Maybe you want to play it as a different character type. Let us know. We are super curious. Uh, otherwise, find us. We have a page and a group. We are on Facebook at the Classic Gamers Guild. Send us an email at mail at classicgamersguild.com. Find us on Twitter at Twitter at the CG Guild. Uh, if you would like to support the show, find us on Patreon, Classic Gamers Guild. Thanks so much to the patrons and donors, especially in the $10 or higher tier on Patreon. And that's Jay Holmes, Jeffrey Couch, and Mark Fillion. We really appreciate the uh, support. It keeps us running. And thank you all for listening. We bloody love you lot. And, you know, don't do a bloody murder. <laughs>